Hey friends, it's Christian. Uh, I, I would like to talk to you guys about something that's uh, quite important to me. Um, we, in life, us as people, we tend to try to progress in just about every way that we can. Oh, we read books to improve our fluency and our brain power, our education levels. We even nearly kill ourselves to make more and more money as time goes on. But there's one area where we really just don't we don't always try to improve, not throughout our whole lives. I feel like with relationships, um, we we usually we work, 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 especially to like woo our potential partner. And then after a certain point, maybe two, three years after getting married, we tend to kind of just coast, right? We don't continue to get better every day. And this is kind of a problem because if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. I mean, think of it like a job. If you were to start out at a certain point, um, you know, you start off excited about this new job and you, you kind of do the same thing every single day, day after day after day. Eventually you get kind of bored of it and you, you start to resent the job and you start to, um, you know, eventually maybe even want to quit, you know, and I mean the exact same kind of language could be applied to a relationship. If you're doing the same thing day in, day out, I mean what started off as new and exciting eventually kind of gets boring and, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. Um, it's, impro uh, it's important for us to continue trying to improve our relationships all the time. Now that's not just in romantic relationships, uh, but that is the focus of this video, is how to keep your relationship with your partner kind of fresh and exciting all the time, continue improving. So I'm going to break this down into two different categories. Um, the first one is uh, surprises and, and exciting things. This helps us kind of like connect with our spouses more, uh, not just on a personal level, but also on a like a, a more intimate level. I mean, everybody likes surprises. Even if they say they don't like surprises, they do, trust me. Um, and that doesn't mean that your surprise has to be like scary or frightening or, or anything really that surprising, but it means that it should be something new to connect you and your partner together. Um, here are my three suggestions. Uh, there are lots more, plenty more ideas that you can come up with, I'm sure. The first one is A to Z dates. So Deborah and I, we tend, we, we try to go on these um, dates, but we have like once a week we go on dates, but it's not like date night where we just hit the, the same restaurant, same movie, whatever. Um, what we typically do is we'll go, you know, we're, we're always revolving around the alphabet. So um, we the first one starts with A. I have to come up with a word that that starts with A, we'll say like art, for example, and then I have to design a date. I mean, that can be like a day out, or it can be just an evening, or something like that, around that word, the word that I pick. So if I have, if I pick the word art, for example, I could go and say, hey, let's do a photo shoot at, um, you know, this really cool graffiti that I found. I actually found this really awesome place, uh, a graffiti just like in the middle of the forest, when I was on my walk the other day with Malaya and. Uh, what we could do, I haven't done this, but what we could do is we could um, just go and take a photo shoot over at the graffiti. I mean, it's in the forest. I, I think it would be great. Something great when A rolls back around, maybe that is something that we'll do. Um, and then, so once I've done that, then it's Deborah's turn to pick uh, B. So we have B, and she has, to, um, she has to pick a date that starts with B, or that revolves around some word that starts with B. So I mean, that could be like balloon, could be blazer. Um, or it could be you know any number of things, obviously. Um, and so you do that all the way through to Z, uh, and then you just start over, and and it's just a continual thing. You can do it from week to week, or you can do it just every once in a while. You can do it every day if you want to, uh, and document the whole experience. But um, the idea is that you're doing something that is different from what you would normally do, doing something new, doing something that's going to connect you to uh, on a more personal level. And I think that that's uh, a really awesome way to do it. The next way to do something new, uh, this is something that I kind of came up with the other day, it's called the hashtag your city challenge. Um, and basically what the idea is that you're going to go on Instagram, you're going to go hashtag your city, for me it's hashtag London, and the first thing that shows up, the most recent picture taken, you are going to go to that place. And now you don't have to, um, you can play by whatever rules you want, obviously, but like if you've been to the place, maybe you don't do it. If it's uh, like an airport, maybe you don't do it. Maybe you need to keep it within like three miles of your house, and so you go to the most recent picture taken within three miles of your house. Um, then that's totally cool too. You can do it however you want. Um, but that's the the beauty of it is that you're you're doing something that you wouldn't normally do. 
you know, Mal I did this with Malaya the other day. We went to Brixton, and we went to Bermondsey, and we went to some other park, I don't know, and, and just a few places I had never even heard of before. And it ended up being a great day. The last one that I think is really cool is you can take a flight or a trip to anywhere. Now, we live in Europe, and so it might be easier for us than somebody else to do this. But I, I looked up earlier today when I was writing this blog article, for £10, I can go to... Um, either Norway or France. I mean, it's just incredible. Like, uh, okay, so Norway would be easier. France, you have to pay like 20 euro to get in and out of the city. But, sorry, Paris, I mean. But if you take a bus into Paris, now we can get a bus also for 10 pounds into Paris. You end up right in the center of town. So what we could do tomorrow night, we book a bus, 10 pounds. Um, we sleep on the bus through night. We probably couldn't do this with Malaya, but um, because she wouldn't sleep on the bus. <laughs> but we sleep on the bus through the night. And then for £10, we book a ticket back, and that's it. We spend a whole day in France, don't even have to pay for a hotel or anything. We just sleep on the bus. We have spend one whole day in Paris, and that's it. Now, if I could surprise Deborah with that, on obviously some days she's not working, um, then <laughs> it, it, would, it helps us like foster this connection, this kind of surprise type of um, thing. It's just something that's a little bit unique. Uh, now we've both been to Paris, so maybe I'll take her to Norway instead because that's another option. But or I could book a flight to Spain for twenty-two pounds for tomorrow. Um, you know, and obviously if I get it further in advance, then all of those tickets become cheaper. <clears throat> so the second section is you should be trying to uh, work towards a common goal together. Now I've got three suggestions for that kind of suck section as well. But again, there are loads of them. Uh, you can come up with them on your own. You can look them up online. There are just so many. Um, the se so part of working towards a common goal, uh, my first one is build a business. Now, this is not going to be for everybody because it does create friction. This doesn't have to be like a profitable business. It could be just some project that you work on together. Really anything. But the idea here is that if you are working together on something, you're coming together and you are discussing things that you wouldn't normally discuss. You're even seeing a different side of your spouse that you might not have seen. You know, like an artsy side or, or maybe just a mad side. I don't know. But... Um, it, it Not only does it help you see a side of your partner that you didn't really see before, but for me personally, it's helped me appreciate the skills that Deborah has that I don't, you know, like her, her arts and her ability to come up with really interesting content, for example. Um, and uh, it's just something, something about... Something about Deborah's skills are really special, and, and if we didn't work on a business together, I'm not sure I would ever have seen it. Uh, and so having these kind of new experiences uh, can help you. I mean, this is just not just for building a business, but this is for everything. Uh, having these kind of new experiences can give you a, a totally different type of appreciation for your spouse. So the next one is to create challenges to do together. Um, now we this this video right now is actually part of a challenge. Uh, we for 21 days we've said that we are going to create a one blog post and one video every single day for 21 days and so I hope you guys hold us to that. Um, last month we did a, a vegetarian challenge for 21 days we were vegetarian and man that first burger was delicious. So good. Um, and so so the, the idea behind this is you have something that you're keeping each other accountable for and you're making yourself better. You're making yourself better, you're making your partner better and you are deciding to do that together. We have the saying blood, sweat and tears. The idea is that when you work really hard with somebody, you form a closer bond with them. And so I don't want to say like being a vegetarian is suffering, but to a certain extent, anytime you put work into something with somebody else, you are bonding yourself to them. And so this idea of us completing these challenges together, this right here is a challenge to do it every single day. Being a vegetarian is a challenge every single day. We're coming up with new recipes. We're, um, you know, doing all sorts of stuff. And so, because we're challenging ourselves together, we are bonding ourselves together in that way. But we're also working together to, um, you know, come up with ideas and uh, just all together working towards that common goal, like we said. The last thing, the third thing in this kind of subsection, uh, is journaling together. And I, I think that this has been really helpful for Deborah and I because. We get together and we, we uh, in the morning we fill out something we're calling the couple journal. It's kind of a new product that we're developing. Um, and it is this 
uh, it's it's a five to ten minute journal that basically like lets us talk about how grateful we are for our, our partner, um, and uh, among other things. But that's what I'm gonna start with. When you talk about how grateful you are with for your partner, not only do you realize how grateful you actually are, because sometimes you forget over time. You forget about the little things that she does. You forget about um, you know the skills that she has, or he. Obviously, I'm talking about my wife. Um, but you you kind of forget and by by writing it down saying what you're grateful for it helps you not take your your spouse for granted uh and i think that that can be really powerful likewise when i name those things that i'm grateful for i am also telling my wife i appreciate them and she is feeling appreciated for them um so we do that it helps with the gratitude inside the journal we also kind of outline our our goal like we'll have like a vision for the month or or a vision for the week and we will say, you know, three things that we're going to work on together, or together or individually, but it's a it's a goal that we're working on together. Um, like thing, three things that we're going to do today to work towards that vision. And so by outlining those sorts of things, we um, we tell each other, you know, we're we're working together on this, and we're we are, you know, which bonds us together, of course. Um, and the third thing that's part of that journal is we talk about how we're, we we make a conscious effort to connect during the day and we say this is how we're going to connect during the day we are going to give each other massages or we're going to watch a movie together or we're going to make sure that we have this for dinner or I'm going to make sure that I, I kiss you you know in the evening anything it could be anything right it could be like we're going on a date tonight or, or don't don't forget that you know we're recording a video tonight together um, just some, we, we try to pick out a few ways that we intend to connect today. Just so that we get in the routine of, of not forgetting about it, not forgetting to, to be intentional with our, um, with how we're connecting and, and kind of like what we're doing. Um, yeah, so that just about wraps this up. Uh, as I've told you guys in the video already, it is very important for you to connect on a daily basis with your spouse. It's important for you to kind of shake things up a little bit because that's how you develop this long-term relationship that doesn't get, I don't want to say boring, but it doesn't get boring over time. Um, and how you, you use these things, working towards a common goal, to want to better yourself, but also to better your relationship with your partner. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please uh, subscribe below.